my name is Rachel and I'm here today on the first day of December, the first day of Vlogmas, to record my first video for Vlogmas. So I've decided to do Vlogmas this year because I'm feeling so Christmassy. I've never felt this Christmassy at the start of December. I'm going to insert a clip now <laughs> of just the snow outside right now because it's snowing like a lot. I've literally never felt more Christmassy than I do in Switzerland on 1st of December when it's fully been snowing after going to an advent market last night. This is immense. Oh my god. Like, it's the 1st of December. In England you are lucky to get snow on Christmas Day and not just in January. Like, oh, I'm, I'm loving it and I'm feeling very, very Christmassy in Switzerland, all the Christmas markets are out in Zurich. I went to an advent market at the school yesterday and all the kids had like made things and they had like fire and mulled wine and all the proceeds were going to a charity and it was just the sweetest thing. And that they decorate early. So in Switzerland, you decorate all your house with Christmas stuff except the Christmas tree, but then the Christmas tree doesn't go up until like the 23rd or 24th of December so it goes up like literally the day of Christmas because their Christmas day is like on the 24th they open all their presents basically on Christmas Eve for us um so they put up the tree I don't know if they put it up in the morning on the 24th or the night of the 23rd I think the parents put it up on the 23rd and then the kids wake up with it on the 24th but the family here don't do that because the kids like decorating the tree. But yeah, like it is really cool seeing how like different their Christmas is to ours. So I'm quite enjoying that. And so yes, I'm feeling super Christmassy and decided to do Vlogmas this year. So yes, that's exciting. So today's video is going to be my November wrap up. So yes, I don't know how many books I read in November. I think it might be around 11. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm just going to get started because I have a lot of books to talk about. So yes, I'm going to start with my non-fiction November reads. Obviously it was non-fiction November in November. And I read five non-fiction books, which is really good for me. I find it very hard to read non-fiction. Sorry, I'm peeling this orange. Um, they keep buying loads of uh, mandarina, that's what they're called here, and I just feel like I'm in primary school. I feel like a child because I always used to have these in primary school and I am loving, I don't know how to put this, the design of the video. I mention a lot that I find reading non-fiction difficult. I think it's because usually I either know what's happened, know what's coming, or know a bit of what they're talking about, whereas when you're in fiction, obviously, the writer will write it in a way that they are trying to get you to keep reading so obviously the devices they use work on me and I do keep reading and with non-fiction obviously that's more difficult so I tend to find it hard to read them fast basically I have to like push myself a lot but all the non-fiction books that I read this month I did not push myself at all and I adored so that is fantastic and I definitely read a lot more non-fiction than I usually do so the first two books that I read were rereads. The first one was We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I listened to this on BookBeat, which is a bookish subscription service, which is just really, really cool because you could just, um, you pay for the month, but then you can read as many audiobooks as you want. So I've read like four audiobooks this month, but just with the price that I pay instead of like with Audible where you have to like pay for each book or get a credit for each book and stuff like that so I'm really enjoying it I'm definitely going to be keeping that on for a while and so the first one I read was the Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie one We Shall Be Feminists and it had Chimamanda reading the book which added so much to it and I really enjoyed it I gave it five out of five stars again it is one of my favorite books on feminism just because it's such a short bite-sized feminism about feminism in another country which I find very interesting and also I just think it's a really good place for people to read about feminism without it being just a massive academic judgmental thing that people don't want to read so yes that was fantastic and the other one I read was Dear Ajuali and 
This one I also listened to on BookBeat, but it wasn't narrated by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, which was a bit disappointing. And I definitely prefer We Should All Be Feminists, but I still gave this five stars and I still love it and think it's fantastic. And I would definitely recommend these two bite-sized feminism books to anyone who wanted to know more about feminism. So obviously those two were my rereads and then the other three books I read were new books. So the first one I read was On Tyranny, 20 Lessons from the 20th Century by Timothy Schneider. Yes, Snyder. I decided to pick this up because I saw it in a bookshop and it was very, very cheap because it's quite small and for Switzerland books are not cheap, so that was quite good. And I had seen Adam at Momentum Mori talking about this and saying how fantastic it was and just decided I wanted to pick it up. And I will link his video below talking about it if I can find it. But this was just absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it three stars, but I still thought it was really, really good. My only thing was, in this book he often, so he talks about, obviously, tyranny in the 20th century, and obviously talks a lot about Hitler, um, a lot about Russia, and things like that. But it's all pulling back to the current situation in America and how Trump got in and things like that. So what he often does is he is very opinionated and it comes through and he will be saying something and then he will pull a direct relation to Trump and his presidency, which I understand what he's doing, but he didn't really need to make. So there were times where he'd be saying something and you would naturally be thinking and relating that back to the situation at present and thinking like, how did those things come to pass that this is happening again or whatever? And then he would say like, and this relates exactly to Trump or, and this, not in so many words, but he would definitely like just pull this connection between them. And I found that it kind of treated the reader like the didn't have any interpretive skills of their own and couldn't realise that on their own, which was a bit annoying for me. One time that you can see that is it is not patriotic to ask those working, taxing American families to finance one's own presidential campaign and then to spend their contributions in one's own companies. Obviously, when he says one's own and all those things, he's talking about Trump. And obviously, I don't like Trump, but I feel whenever he made comments about Trump or relating to Trump, they made it seem quite juvenile. It seemed a bit like backhanded insults, like that one about companies. It's, he could have just spoke about the fact that Trump took money from presidential campaigns. He could have told us about that in the book, but he doesn't tell us about it. He just makes it a backhanded comment, which, yeah, that just bothered me. It made it seem a bit juvenile. But apart from that, I really enjoyed it and I found it really informative and really informative for stuff now, especially with Russia, some stuff that I did not know about Russia at the moment. So yeah, this was really, really interesting and I'm really, really glad that I picked it up. And then the other two non-fictions I read, I gave both of them four stars. The first one was Amy Schumer's autobiography, The Girl with the Low Back Tattoo, which I again listened to on BookBeat. And it was narrated by Mishima, which was fantastic. It's the first time I've listened to an audiobook that was narrated by the actual author. And it was a very, very good experience. I'm definitely going to be doing that again. There's an Alec Baldwin autobiography on there. I love Alec Baldwin. And um, I'm going to see if it's narrated by Alec Baldwin. If it is, I'm definitely going to hope to be listening to that very, very soon. I listened to Mishima one. Four out of five stars. Very, very, very funny very much enjoyed it and I enjoyed the stuff she used it to talk about a lot of current things that are very interesting to me she talked about self-esteem and the way you view body and the way that Hollywood viewed her body especially when she decided to make train wreck and about how her body was supposed to look and how they wanted it to look and how actually her body looks ridiculous being so thin and it made like her head and her body out of proportion and all these things um it was really nice to hear someone talking about that she also talked about abuse and consent a lot there was a shooting at one of the film one of the screenings of her film when it came out in america 
so she talked about that and about gun laws and I just found that it was a very good book because it talked about stuff that was current and issues of the moment and all of those sorts of things but she it wasn't pushed into you she didn't try and get across an agenda she just kind of told her opinion and then also told some jokes and some funny anecdotes about her life and I really really enjoyed it I thought it was a fantastic autobiography and it actually made me want to read a lot more autobiographies so yes I'm hoping to do that which is exciting and then the last non-fiction book that I read I finished yesterday in a heap of tears which I expected but didn't expect and it is When Breath Becomes Air, What Makes Life Worth Living in the Face of Death by Paul Kalanithi. Paul Kalanithi was a neurosurgeon and I think he was 37 when he died and basically he got told that he had inoperable lung cancer eventually and yeah, this is his sort of memoir about what happened to him and yes, This is really good. I was not expecting it to be what it is. So this, if you are squeamish, be aware this book is, has very detailed explanations of operations and all that sort of thing and like doctors and their jobs and their daily life, which I found extremely interesting but I know a lot of people would, like my mum would be well creeped out by some of the stuff that they said in here. So yeah, if you are squeamish, I would think about whether you want to read it or not. But I, so the first part of it, he just talks about going to medical school, well, going to get a degree in English, actually. He gets a degree in English first, and then he decides to go to medical school after. And and then it goes through all his medical training, which was the best the best part of this book was definitely him talking about medical training and becoming a doctor and a surgeon and all that sort of stuff it was just so fascinating and it kind of felt like reading um scrubs which is scrubs is a tv show which i used to be obsessed with set in a hospital and it reminded me a lot of that which was one of my favorite shows growing up so this definitely made me want to rewatch Scrubs again. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I what so before I read this, I definitely thought this was going to be a book that destroyed me. I thought I was gonna cry a lot. And then when I started reading it, I thought, oh, it, it won't be that bad because it's very scientific, it's very to the point, and he doesn't really go that much into anything that could be upsetting, even once he does t- start talking about illness and how he found out that he was ill and all those things he still doesn't really it's not very upsetting but then there's this switch and this switch happens and then everything is just oh it's so upsetting um but this is definitely just one of the best books that I've read that's non-fiction like I really really enjoyed this and Paul Kalanithi is just such a fantastic writer and I'm so glad that he turned his mind to writing before he died because this is fantastic and I was so glad I read it so yes that is the last non-fiction book that I read in November so then I have some poetry books I read four poetry books this month the first one is Emily Bronte's The Night is Darkening Around Me I had been reading this um in October I think and maybe September I was just taking my time and reading it as and when I felt like it Uh, I think I gave this two stars which uh, means I like on Goodreads it means I like it I'm trying to give things more honest Goodreads ratings to how I actually felt about them and two is I like it even though I feel like two is not a good rating but yeah I'm giving it two anyway (laughs) um Yeah, I liked this. I definitely like her poetry more than the other Bronte sisters. And I did enjoy this. But I think the more poetry I've read and the more modern poetry I've read, I now know what kind of poetry I like. And this doesn't quite fall into that bracket. Then I read Let the Meet Chaos by Kate Tempest, which I think I gave two and a half stars. Wasn't overly fond of this. This is told from the perspective of seven different people in London on just a night 
and they are awake and it kind of talks about their like internal monologue and what's going on with them at the time when this is happening and it reflects on like political situations and social situations and all that sort of stuff there were two sto- two of the points of view that I really enjoyed the rest of it was just kind of it was just kind of here or there I, I just didn't love this it's not gonna stick with me and then I read The Princess Saves Herself in this one, which I think I gave four stars. I did film a review for this, so I will link it down below if you want to go and watch it. But this is basically a poetry collection that focuses on feminism and like self-appreciation and learning to love yourself. And it also has a lot about eating disorders and self-harm in here and uh, the deaths of loved ones. So yeah. I would be careful reading this if you feel like you might be triggered. And then the last one I have is The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Core, which I loved. I gave five out of five stars. Um, and yeah, I just, I love Ruby Core. I think she's a fantastic poet. I think she might be my favourite poet at the moment. And this was just fantastic. This covered a lot more than Milk and Honey, which is her other book. Milk and Honey covers... Uh, feminism, sexuality, abuse, learning to, uh, you know, be okay with yourself and all those things. But this one did those things and then it went a bit further and she talked about uh, violence in the world. She talked about, um, oh, she talked about her mother and being an immigrant and they they were some of her best poems were the ones about her mum. There's a poem in here called Home, which is the one that if you look up uh, Rupi Kaur TED Talk, she does a performance of that poem in the TED Talk. I will link it down below, but it's a fantastic, fantastic performance. And she really brings to light the um, meanings of the poem. And just it, the way that she talks, she has just a phenomenal voice for reading poetry. So I just, oh, I love it. And I love her drawings. So obviously she illustrates all the poems and things like this I just love because obviously it's different positions whilst the people are having sex but they're all connected to each other and it just shows this like fluidity of people and it's just like the most simple things there's no detail on any of the people you could mistake them for not being people for the lack of detail there but you just don't you just know what they are and I just oh I love it I just love her drawings in this so yeah, this was just, this is fantastic. This was amazing. I'm definitely going to be picking up everything that Rupi Kaur ever writes, I think. And yes, definitely pick this up. This was five out of five stars. Um, then I have some YA and children's books that I read. The first one was Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I listened to this on BookBeat. I think I gave it three stars in the end. I enjoyed this, but didn't think it was amazing. The audiobook was not good for me. Neil Gaiman actually read the audiobook, which I was really excited for, but I wasn't fond of the added stuff that they put in for the performance. So they added like people singing and sounds and all this sort of stuff. And I don't really want that from an audiobook. So I wasn't overly fond. I am going to reread Coraline because at home I do have an illustrated edition by Chris Riddle and I love Chris Riddle's illustrations. So I think when I read that I'll have more of an idea of what I actually think of it. It's about a little girl who is living in a new place and she finds a little door to a sort of parallel world and yeah it's all about her going there and meeting her other mother and other father and all these people that are the others of the people in her world and they want Coraline to join them but they have some pretty high asks of her to allow her to join them and it's all about how that works out um I would definitely recommend the film it is fantastic and maybe the book when I read it I know whether I would recommend it then the last two books that I read this month were the first one is Turtles All The Way Down by John Green I adored this I thought it was just such a fantastic exploration of mental illness and OCD and how completely taking over it is and how it 
how it can worm its way into the best of situations, which is definitely summed up in the times when she is in romantic situations with someone and then her OCD creeps in and ruins the moment for her, which I can definitely uh, understand. Like, I've had moments when that's happened to me before, when, like, personal things get in the way of you being in a moment that you really, really want to be in and it almost makes you want to cry and he just got that perfectly. Um, it's about a girl called Aza and I would ignore the blurb, to be honest. The blurb talks about this girl called Aza who's trying to pursue the mystery of a fugitive billionaire. Um, but, like, I feel that's definitely a side plot to the main plot about Aza and her life and all that sort of stuff so I don't really know why that was the main thing in the blurb but yes this is absolutely fantastic and I really really enjoyed it I'm hoping to make a video on this soon but it's going to be a little bit different to a review video so um I don't know when that'll be going up but yes hopefully that will be happening and this was fantastic the next one we have was fantastic one of my favorite reads of this month and it was Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. So Sarah Crossan is the author behind One which is a book about two conjoined twins that's very popular on booktube. I loved that book I thought it was very very interesting. I loved the set out so she does all her writing through like blank verse poetry which is just amazing. And I enjoyed one, but it wasn't my favourite thing ever. And I think it was to do with the story not really being um, the, the most interesting story for me. Not in terms of the uh, conjoined twins, like hearing about their life and their situation was quite interesting. But I think it's just being in that high school setting with gossip going on. I'm just not, not overly fond of that situation. This was a lot better than one for me. I gave this four stars. I don't know if it'd be 4.5 stars now, to be honest. I just adored this. I thought it was fantastic. This is about a boy who hasn't seen his brother since he was seven because his brother was taken away and sentenced to uh, death row, basically. And this book starts where his brother has just got the date for his the day he's gonna die and the boy in this who we see the story from his perspective he is 17 so his brother has been gone for 10 years and he decides to go to Texas which is where his brother is being held and do his best to try and get his brother out of this situation and stop him being you know given the death penalty. This was just phenomenal like oh it's just so well written the story was fantastic it was so interesting it pulled you in all the characters were like three-dimensional and just I just really 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 enjoyed this book and I would definitely recommend it if you enjoyed one I would say you will probably enjoy this more because I thought it was a lot better at least um I love with the way that she writes how she because of the blank verse format, she does obviously doesn't put as much description in as you usually get in books, but it's still just as fleshed out and just as well created, which I find really interesting when I'm reading because I'm reading it thinking, do I actually need as much description as people put in books or do I just enjoy reading it and think it's beautiful? But if it wasn't there, I could just use my imagination and get to it anyway. Um, so yeah, that's really, really interesting and I really enjoyed this and I would highly, highly recommend it. It's absolutely fantastic and covers such an important topic. So yes, this is brilliant. And so yes, that is all the books that I read in November and yeah, welcome to the first day of Vlogmas. I will see you tomorrow. Bye!